Hey everybody, Nikki VMLP here, and welcome to my 1000 DeviantArt Watchers Ask Me Anything Special. What the hell was that? Okay, that was weird. Okay, so, back when I hit 900 Watchers on DeviantArt, I asked you guys to ask me stuff, and I would answer them when I hit 1000 Watchers. Well, I just hit 1000 Watchers last night, so, here we are. Let's friggin do this thing I've got the questions loaded up right here okay here we go first one is from crystal artist who wants to know who is your favorite pony Pinkie Pie without a doubt like Pinkie Pie is amazing every line of dialogue that comes out of Pinkie Pie's mouth is absolute comedic gold Andrea Libman is just brilliant with uh, the voice acting on her uh, the writers have done a good job with her and uh, she's out of all the main six I'm not sure if she's had the most character development that might go to Rainbow Dash but she has had a crap ton of character development with episodes like uh, Too Many Pinkie Pies, A Friend Indeed, Party of One uh, stuff like that like Pinkie Pie like has some real oh Baby Cakes, Baby Cakes that's another one she goes through a great deal of character development as the series goes, and it's turned her into a, a surprisingly three-dimensional character, especially when you're considering what she, or where she was at when the series started. So, yeah, Pinkie Pie. All right, Scalopolton301 wants to know, how long were you a fan of Metroid? I'm not really a fan of Metroid, like, it's, which is weird, because normally, like, I gobble up anything from Nintendo, but uh, for some reason, I've just never really gotten into the Metroid series. Um, the only Metroid games that I've played are the first half of Prime 1, um, a good bit of Fusion, and all of Other M, which is way more Other M than I wanted to play, because... Other M is horrible in my opinion, but uh, yeah, I, I just I'm just not a fan of uh, shooters in general, at least from the first person perspective. And uh, Prime was the first Metroid games that I had a shot at playing, and they were all first person games. So I guess that might have thrown me off of the Metroid series. Um, which it, it's kind of weird how I my relationship is with shooting shooting games like first person shooters I'm not that huge of a fan of like uh, the primes and Halo and Call of Duty and all them but third person shooters like uh, the later Ratchet and Clank games or mercenaries or destroy all humans like those are all really fun games so I don't I don't know why that's the case but yeah I've, I'm just not that huge of a fan of Metroid okay uh, what kind of location theme would you like to see in an episode? For example, would you like to see an episode where the characters are back in time, uh, in a failing and quickly co cooling biodome in the Arctic, etc., etc.? Um, and that's from uh, Obey Bunny. Um, hmm. So, what settings would I like to see in a future episode? Um, well, I would like to see the ponies going into the future, because we have established that time spells are a thing, like you can go back and forth in time. So, maybe an episode where the ponies see the future or something, maybe they, they find out what Equestria is like after Celestia is gone or something like that. Although that would have some pretty severe ramifications of its own. But... Yeah, I, I, I want to see a future of Equestria episode. That that would be pretty neat. And he, all, Bunny, all, Obey Bunny also asks, what kind of conflict or story might you like to see the characters going through in that location? Well, when you have an episode where you're going into the future, the default story would be how to get back to your regular time. And seeing as how... Uh, the ponies would be trying to um, I, I get the feeling that the ponies would be trying to get back to their present day time so that would probably be most of the conflict or story that that episode would entail um but yeah 
It, that's what I w would uh, like to see. Alright, next one. From Jet Samurai 7 x What kinds of things would you like to see in Season 4 of My Little Pony? Um, well, Season 3 was getting involved getting some of the main six closer to their overall goals. Like, Rainbow Dash joined the Wonderbolt Academy and presumably graduated from it. Uh, Twilight became an Alicorn Princess. Um, I want to see more of that. I want to see other people, or other members of the main six, getting closer to their goals. Uh, maybe Rarity getting a shot at becoming a, uh, an owner of a store in Canterlot. Or maybe at least just working. Maybe, maybe an episode where Rarity gets a job offer to um, go to work at a fashion design place in Canterlot and she has to decide between living the high life and her basically lifelong dream or staying with the friends. Um, also maybe Pinkie Pie uh, getting a shot at running maybe getting a longer shot at running Sugar Cube Corner Corner um, Maybe another episode. I I would like to see another episode about uh, Rainbow Dash and the Wonderbolts because that episode didn't exactly have a perfect ending that really uh, explained what happened to Rainbow Dash, uh, like what what was her future with the Wonderbolts or Li Lightning Dust's future with the Wonderbolts for that matter. So that would make for a really good episode. So yeah, I that's just. Oh, another thing that I want to see from season four. I want to see what happens when I want to see one of the Cutie Mark Crusaders getting their Cutie Mark, and um, and what would happen with the dynamic of the group? Like, would the one who get the cutie, who got the Cutie Mark, still be a member of the group? Would the other members of the group be jealous? Um, would the Cutie Marked one stay in the Crusaders as kind of an advisor? Uh, to other ponies who are looking to get their cutie marks. Um, would the cutie mark crusaders possibly expand? Because, hey, we've got a pony who actually succeeded in our cutie mark crusaders program thing. That So that'd be interesting. Uh, I want to see an episode about that uh, centers around Zakora. Like, I wanted to see that back in Season 3, and I still want to see it now. I want to see an episode that goes into Zakora's backstory. Maybe shows... Uh, the land that she came from, why she left, was the journey perilous. Like, that kind of an episode has potential for some serious um, character development for Zakora, and I freaking love Zakora. She is awesome. So, yeah, that would be great. Alright, next question. Um, from BenderFan111, what are some of your favorite games or game series? Okay, my favorite game of all time, I mentioned this back in my uh, uh, Top 10 Cartoons video. My favorite video game is all, of all time is Pokemon Crystal, followed closely by Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. Um, I think after that was uh, Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, um, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Uh, Crash 3, Warped, and Super Mario Sunshine rounded out my top half dozen. My favorite series, um, I'd say the PlayStation 1 Spyros and the PlayStation 1 Crashes. Uh, most anything from Nintendo, Mario, Kirby, uh, Zelda, F-Zero. They're, they're big ones, and... By the way, when the frick is Nintendo going to come out with the new uh, F-Zero game? Like, seriously. Like, slow down with the Mario cards and make a frickin' F-Zero game! Uh, Pokemon, big fan of Pokemon. Uh, yeah. What's some non-Nintendo stuff that I like? Uh, I like the Destroy All Humans series, at least when they were good. Um, Ratchet and Clank, Sly Cooper... Jack and Daxter. Um, I'm starting to get into 
some more modern series like the Assassin's Creed games and Infamous games. Those are both really good. Um, yeah. I, I dabble in a lot of stuff. All right. Our World 913 wants to know, why is your cutie mark a football and why did you pick everything about your pony? Um, well, basically, my OC, his name's Apple Flip, and um, I basically made him a member to be a member of the Apple family because, you know, that's that's pretty easy to do since the Apple family is huge. And um, I made his cutie mark a football because I made it so that his backstory was that, uh, like, his job is a professional football player. He's a he's a kicker in the pony equivalent of the NFL. You might be able to tell, but I'm a pretty big sports fan. And um, I, I thought to myself, what is another job that being able to kick something really hard, which is what uh, the Apple family is known for with their bucking of trees, what's another job where that could be useful? And the first thing that came to my mind was a uh, professional football kicker. And since I like football more than I like soccer, uh, I went with football. So, yeah, that's that's why I did that. Uh, I chose the name Apple Flip because I love Little Debbie Snap, Little Debbie Snap Cake, Little Debbie Snack Cakes. Apparently, I don't love them enough to know how to freaking say them right. Um, and Apple Flips are a Little Debbie Snack Cake, and they are delicious. So there you go. Um, let's see here, what? As for his look, um. I don't know, I just wanted to go with something kind of ruggish. Like ruggedish. I don't know. Uh, basically, I just wanted to make him look like a member of the Apple family. Like maybe a, a bigger kind of guy, because, you know, he plays, he's an athlete, he plays sports, but, you know, kickers are usually smaller than, like, other football players, so yeah, it couldn't be too big. Basically, he's smaller than. Big Macintosh, but bigger than Brayburn. Let, let's call it that. Smaller than Big Mac, bigger than Brayburn. Alright, what else is there? Um, also from Our World 913 could you mention me in your vid? I don't have any followers and need some. Please, thanks. No, I will not give a shout-out to Our World 913 nor will I leave a link to this person's page in an annotation that will be somewhere in this area. You can't make me. I, I, I don't. Okay. There you go. Okay. A super ghost kamikaze wants to know who and or what inspired you to start this channel. P.S. I subscribed as soon as I saw one of your videos. Thank you, a super ghost kamikaze. You are awesome. Um, as to what inspired me, uh, well, since I do a lot of things on this channel, there was quite a few things that inspired me. Uh, for starters, with the uh, scene defender stuff um, and the reviews. Basically, there were some episodes that I really, really liked, but I saw that people were uh, criticizing certain parts of it, and I I tried to think of those episodes that I really liked. Uh, why did the writers write it that way? Like, what what was what was their thought process behind that? And I tried to uh, think about ways to explain. Uh, the certain quirks of those episodes, and that's where the scene defender came from. Uh, as for the analysis kind of stuff, I always had these sort of sorts of ideas about these uh, videos, but when I found guys like you know Digi, Brony, Curious, um, uh, Anthony C, Paleo Steno, I found out that apparently people watch that kind of stuff, so that's where that started from. The the commentary stuff, basically, uh, guys like Brony Comms and Ratchetness made it look like so much fun, so I thought, hey, why not give it a shot? It looks like fun. And also, something that might have had something to do with it, um, as, as I've mentioned numerous times, I do stuff on DeviantArt where I make uh, Ponified Box Arts, a uh, video game covers, and... Um, I, at, at the time, I was cranking out, or at one time I was cranking out like a cover a day, and I 
didn't want to get burnt out on doing that because that sort of happened back when I was doing Let's Plays. Like I was basically consuming all of my time into, or maybe not consuming, but I was spending all of my time uh, doing stuff involving my Let's Plays that eventually just felt like a second job and I got bored with it and I've since stopped. Um, and I didn't want that to happen with my covers so I decided to um, mix things up. I decided to start this channel, start making videos and therefore um, I guess slow down production on the covers because now I'm down to like three or four covers a week and at the same time work on something else so I'm always mixing it up and uh, not working on the same thing for a very long time and getting eventually getting bored with it so yeah that that probably had a hand in it alright what else we got uh, next up alright now some of these are coming from other episodes because I asked you guys to uh, think of like I asked you guys to come up with suggestions and put them in the comments, so I might as well discuss them here. Um, Our World 913 again said, "Oh, uh, this one's coming from the uh, the season four animatic video where I asked you guys what a uh, Fluttershy or Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie's powers could be that were shown in the season four animatic, as well as um, what events they could do in the Equestria games." Uh, let's see here. Our World 913 wants to know, or says uh, Fluttershy could be in a swimming thing because she likes animals. That was actually the first thing that I was thinking of, but at the same time, she doesn't really do any swimming. So that would be kind of like a just a random person who like knows how to swim but doesn't really do anything with it. It'd be like that person going into the Olympics. So I don't know about that. Um. Uh, so your Sky Silverwing says, "I'm hoping that there will be events that can only exist within the world of Equestria." Okay, that would make a little bit of sense because you know they can do stuff that other ponies or they can do stuff that people can't. Uh, and, and Sky suggested uh, synchronized flying. That could be something that maybe uh, Rainbow and Fluttershy could complete compete in. I mean, these people aren't, like, forced into doing only one competition, so yeah. And considering the friendship that uh, Rainbow and Fluttershy have with each other, that could be something cool. Okay, Jeffrey Morgan says uh, about su Fluttershy's superpower, Perhaps Fluttershy has a loud screaming power. That'd be kind of interestingly ironic, and it is a power that some uh, superheroes have had in the past. Like, I remember back in uh, Justice League Unlimited, uh, Black Canary had that power. So, yeah, that, that could work. And I think the rest of these will be um, fr from the question that I asked. Well, maybe it wasn't really a question, but the thing that I addressed during my Top 10 Cartoons episode where I said that you guys were going to mention videos that, or cartoons that you thought I should put on this list that I didn't, and you wanted me to give my thoughts on those particular cartoons. So let's take a look. But first, some other stuff. Uh, from that, from the cartoons thing. Uh, Sly Cooper, <clears throat> excuse me, Sly Copper 23 says, Dragon Ball is not a cartoon. It's close enough. I mean, it's animated, so I call it a cartoon. Okay, that that's, that's how I feel about it. Uh, let's see here. Mugen Laszlo. Mugen Laszlo wants to know, can you do a top 10 worst cartoons, please? Um, no, I don't think so, because I'm not good at doing negative top 10s. Like, whenever 
I watch or play or read something that I just think is horrible, unless it's really, really bad, as was the case with uh, Metroid Other M, I just kind of, like, try to delete it from my mind. Like, I try to just forget about it as much quickly as I can so that um, I don't have to think about it anymore. Although there are some pretty bad cartoons out there. I mentioned that I didn't like Chowder or um, uh, the Total Drama shows. I'll get to the uh, Total Drama thing later because I remember somebody asked about that. But as for Chowder, it, it, it just felt like childish. Like it, it, it looked dumb. It just I don't really have a concrete explanation as to why, but I just didn't like it. It just felt dumb. And uh, there's a couple others. Uh, Inuyasha. That that was. I I don't care if I piss off people who like Inuyasha, but that girl who kept like. I've got a couple of uh, step nephews who watch anime, and I saw an episode with it once, and the girl who just kept screaming in Inuyasha's name just was the most annoying character I have ever heard and I just couldn't take it anymore so I just belt bolted alright uh, some other ones Mantis24513 says uh, one of my favorites is Fairly Odd Parents um, well something that I should probably mention about my cartoon viewing habits from back in the uh, late 90s and early 2000s. I was a Cartoon Network guy. I watched very little Disney Channel and even less of Nickelodeon. So I didn't really get exposed to stuff like SpongeBob or Kim Possible. I think both of those were brought up later. With I'll talk about those. Um, and same for um, Fairly Odd Parents. Um, also, I remember seeing an episode once, and I know this is going to sound kind of um, hypocritical coming from, you know, Brony, but I just I remember watching it the first time and said, wow, this looks like it's for six-year-olds, I'm not going to lie. And it, it didn't help that I was babysitting a couple of six-year-olds when I saw it. So I put the pieces together like, okay, this looks like it's for six-year-olds. There's a couple of six-year-olds right over there watching it. This show's for six-year-olds. And I've since learned that the earlier seasons of... At least the earlier seasons of Fairly Odd Parents were uh, pretty good and more adult... Uh, re like, more relatable for adults, but... I don't know, I just never really got into it. Uh, Darius Dempsey Jr., says uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie was great in all the ways you talked about, so why not that? I remember liking Ed, Ed, and Eddie, maybe not as much as other Cartoon Network shows from the time, like Courage, or the Powerpuff Girls, or Dexter's Lab, stuff like that. I remember liking Ed, Ed, and Eddie, but I get the feeling that if I were to go back and watch it today, it would be um, like less, less funny. I, I know that I said that I was huge on like a big old nostalgia whore, but yeah. I just don't think I'd be into it today. Darius Dempsey Jr. also says, Who doesn't like the Kim Possibles? I mean, common. I mean, come on. Well, again, the Disney Channel thing. I did get Disney Channel, but I just didn't watch a whole bunch of it. But, um, I don't know. I just wasn't into it, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I I like like I've seen some episodes of uh Kim Possible and they're good and uh I'm a big fan of I love Kim Possible a lot so there's that but um yeah I I just never got into it cuz it was on a different channel and last one from Darius Dempsey Jr. Animaniacs <laughs> Fuck! I forgot about the Animaniacs, and if I had remembered the Animaniacs, then the Animaniacs would have been easily in my top ten. Like you would, like I would have kicked out American Dad and put in Animaniacs because the Animaniacs were 
fucking funny. Like, damn, I I cannot believe I forgot about the out about the Animaniacs, especially considering I was thinking about doing a PMV where I'd take the Animaniacs theme song and and ponying it. Shit. Yeah. So, Animaniacs. That definitely should have been on there. And it wasn't. And that was my fault. And I apologize. Alright. Some other ones. Alright. What's that? Benick? Yeah, Benick the, Dr the Benick the Hedgehog says, Hey, Nikki, how come Pokemon did not make your top ten list? Me and Pokemon have a strange relationship. Um, like, I was huge into the anime when I was younger, for the most part. But as the show went on, I kept saying numerous times, Wait, that doesn't happen in the games! Because I, I took the games as more, I guess, canon than the animes. Like, the, the, the games took precedent over the anime since the games are what inspired the TV show. So, whenever stuff like uh, Pikachu using Thunder on, I think, Rhydon from the first movie, or Pikachu using the, the like, electric shield thing with Swellow back in uh, the, the Hoenn days, uh, just various things that just bugged me, and eventually, I think it was sometime during the Hoenn series, um, just Pokemon fell out of favor of me entirely. So, um, like, Pokemon fell totally out of favor with me around the Hoenn time. I, I eventually got back in it with, uh, Pokemon Platinum, but I just never, uh, picked up the anime after that, because, uh, like I said, um, at that time, I had just stopped watching anime altogether because I was focusing on other stuff. Okay. I think that's it. No, wait. We got one more from Julie Link's Moo. It says... Oh, he, this one's got a couple of them. Uh, I would have included Avatar The Last Airbender on my list. Um... I think I've seen two episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender. I, I remember one episode where the earth, the blind earth bending girl and the water bending girl, I think that's what their, their abilities were, were like at a spa or something. Like they were cleaning up the blind girl because, you know, she was blind and she didn't know how dirty she was. And I remember another episode where Aang was trying to get the these two tribes to go through a canyon together and the two tribes hated each other because one of them was a bunch of barbarians and the other one was a bunch of like high class dudes who like were really really clean and all that stuff and they kept getting into arguments with each other because eh, we, we couldn't like they, they just kept bickering at each other and yeah those I think those are the only two episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender that I ever watched I, I've heard that it's really good, and I've also heard that the spin-off, um, Legend of Korra, I think it is, I heard that's really good too, but I've just never really gotten into it. That, that's something I can say about a lot of cartoons. Like, I just never really got into them. Like, like Kim Possible or SpongeBob or, um... Avatar The Last Airbender. Actually, I'm gonna give you guys a bonus one about SpongeBob. Um... I was into Spongebob for about a couple of months, and then I thought, wow, this is kind of dumb. I'm not going to lie. I, I see the that, that this is something that adults can enjoy, but I enjoy, but I am not. So I'm going to watch something else now. All right, I just got one more in from Blue Dragon Ninja, who says, I'm not going to say... Okay, I just want to know your reasons for saying the total drama series is lacking what others have. You agree the chowder's crap. 
heard a lot of people don't like it. I love it. I think it's a great parody slash satire of reality shows and what they do to get ratings. That's well and good and everything, but I don't care about and like uh, I don't care about reality shows like at all. So I guess it's probably why I don't care about the parody of the reality shows. Like I don't hate them. I just don't watch them like in any regard. So yeah, that that might have something to do with it. Um plus I uh, when when you when you do a parody of something, you're walking a tightrope between making a good product and making a good parody. Like you have to juggle those two things if you're going to do it like that. And I, I I just don't think that the total drama shows do it very well. Like I had to watch it one time while I was getting my oil changed. It was on the TV and some kid was watching it. And um, when they broke out into song for something, the song was really freaking stupid. Like just everything about it was dumb. Like they were singing about some guy who made something in the shape of somebody else's face or something like that and I'm like why should I care about any of these people like I I don't care about any of them so yeah I guess that's the reason why I don't care about the um total drama shows like I heard that the first season was better but I don't care all right there are a couple of other questions that I was asked on my DeviantArt page, so let's get to those as well. Just give me one second. Alright, first one of the DeviantArt questions comes from Green Rob, who has two questions. Number one, so what does it feel like to have so many watchers? Feels pretty good. I mean, it means a lot of people see my works, so a lot of people enjoy them, and it does mean that with as much um, I guess it, attention comes the negative attention that naturally comes along with it, but thankfully it's few, far between, and not really all that impactful. So, yeah, I'd say it's pretty much aces. And what made you think of making games pony style? Well, it was actually a kind of interesting story. Uh, I was playing Mario Kart Double Dash, which ended up being the first game I ended up ponifying. And I was putting the game back in its box and I looked on the back and the t I saw the tagline for the game and it literally said double the fun now how can you not make something MLP related after that I mean it, it, was, it was obvious I had to do it so I tried to uh, place Luna into the game somewhere I decided to make him replace Luigi since Luna and Luigi kind of have a lot of similarities uh, both are underappreciated second bananas to absolute hero and siblings to the absolute heroes of their respective lands. Um, but then I, I was looking at the cover and I saw Luna surrounded by Mario characters and it just felt kind of off. So I added another character here and another character there and another and another and another and another and another. I changed the uh, a couple of other small minor things about it like the title and the ESRB rating and the company and all that stuff and finally at that point I realized oh man I have a fairly big size large thing here so I thought eh, maybe the guys on Deviant aren't like this they like ponies so let's give them ponies and I had a Deviant Art page that I literally wasn't doing anything with so yeah I found something to do with my Deviant Art page and there you go. Okay. Um, Obsessor of Things wants to know what got you into My Little Pony? Not the most original question, but yeah. Um, well, the very first thing from MLP that I remember watching that I knew was about MLP was the, uh, the screw attack death battle between Rainbow Dash and Starscream from the Transformers. And I learned a few things from that, and I thought it was pretty interesting, and then I moved on, and then eventually a bunch of my friends started 
like changing their avatars to My Little Pony related stuff, and they um, and they were like in subscriptions and not subscription signatures talking about like making some sort of pony reference, and eventually, and and these were all people that I knew and and respected. I knew that these weren't just a bunch of uh, weird, meaningless things. So I asked a couple of them about the show, got some opinions, and then eventually my curiosity got the better of me, and I watched an episode, the uh, the season one, uh, the pilot episode. And at first, I wasn't totally hooked. I thought it was good, but I wasn't really feeling it. It took me a couple of weeks before I ended up watching another episode, and then about a week later, another one, a couple of days later, another one, and the next day, another one. You see where this is going. Eventually, I started watching more and more and more episodes, and it wasn't until I got all the way to Sonic Rainboom where I finally said, Okay, you got me. I'm, I'm, I'm Brony. You win. But, yeah. So, that's the story of how I got into My Little Pony. Alright, uh, Chow Cream wants to know, what's your favorite game cover you've done so far? Well, the ones that I like the best are the ones that look the most um, unchanged, I guess you could say. The ones that actually look like they could pass for a real video game cover. Because some of them, you got all this uh, dark, gritty landscape, and then all of a sudden, BAM! Pony! And it, it looks a little bit out of place. But some of the ones with simpler backgrounds, uh, the ones that come to mind right off the top of my head, Mario and Luigi, Bowser's Inside Story, uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day, uh, Hitman Blood Money, all of those games have kind of plain backgrounds and just a character in there. And it honestly makes the game cover look almost, like, real. So... I guess those are the ones that I like the best. Um, let's see here, what other ones do I really, really like? Um, maybe ones that just kind of worked out perfectly, like uh, Donkey Kong 64. That one was really cool because, like, that was originally set to come out like before I got my computer stolen. Uh, it was literally supposed to come out right around the time that uh, One Bad Apple came out. And I needed a fifth Apple family member to fill the role of Tiny Kong. And sure enough, boom, Babs shows up out of nowhere and just saves my butt there. Same thing sort of happened with my cover of Medieval, which uh, came out literally right, which was literally asked of me um, right before Queen Chrysalis showed up. Er, yeah, Chrysalis. Apparently that's... That's the right name, as many of you have been quick to point out. So, yeah, I, I'd say those are my favorite ones. The ones that both, um, the ones that just look like they could be real, and the ones that just came together for me perfectly. Alright, DJ Umbreon. How would you react if Lauren Faust got to fulfill her plans for Rainbow Dash being Firefly? Be alright. I mean... Actually, I kind of prefer her as her Rainbow Dash design because that the Rainbow Dash design looks unique to her. If she were to take on the color scheme of Firefly, which I believe is a pink coat and a blue mane, I mean, Pinkie Pie already has the pink co uh, coat part down, and honestly, it, it would be a little bit less memorable than with what Rainbow Dash has. So... Yeah, I, I like her as in her current state. Necromagenvian wants to know, what is your favorite and your worst, I guess that would mean least favorite, game of all time? Well, I already mentioned my most favorite, uh, uh, Pokemon Crystal. My least favorite game of all time? Oh, man, that's, that's a tough one. Um, Metroid Other M is up there, because that, that was... Mm. But I would actually have to say, this might be a bit strange, but Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. Like, that game was just... Oh my god, what the frick did you do to Spyro, you bastards? Like, honestly, I felt like what... Um, shoot, who's the company? Eurocom, I want to say? Hang on just a second. Okay, damn you, 
Equinox for making whatever the hell that was. It definitely wasn't freaking Spyro. So, yeah. That one. Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. It's got horrible controls, loading times that last forever, uh, stupid, stupid power-ups. Um... The voice acting is god awful, and it wasn't any it wasn't anything special in the earlier games, but it was at least decent, and it's mostly the same voice actors, so it feels like they're just kind of phoning it in. Uh, the levels are unimaginative, which was one of the real strengths of the first game, of the first three games actually. Like it, it, it was just not that good. So, yeah, Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. Typically, I don't play very many bad games, so... Like, I, I've never played any of the infamously bad games, so... That, that's probably why I think Spyro, Enter the Dragonfly, is that way. Probably making this camera shake a whole bunch whenever I do this. Alright, Dibro210. What's the worst movie you've ever seen? Oh no, I don't watch that many movies. Um, the worst movie I've ever seen. Wait, I have seen Birdemic. Let's go with Birdemic. Uh, Starblade Buster. If there were any regrets you have on any of these, what would it slash they be? I wish I would have learned how to do, uh, transition... Um, oh, what's the... F uh, I wish I would have learned how to do transparent gradients before I was, like, 50 covers in. That would have made my job so much easier. Um, let's see here. What other regrets? Um, well, I've never really figured out how to do fire properly. Like, any anytime fire is involved in the cover of the game, it does not turn out pretty. A as was the case with, um, let's see here, Super Smash Bros. Melee, Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage, like, both of those covers have fire in them, and I'm, I'm just not that good at replicating fire in these things. So, yeah, that, that's a problem. But other than that, I'm, I'm fairly satisfied with how my covers have turned out. So, so, yeah, I feel I think that is just about everything. Yes, it is. Okay. So, yeah, I would say that's just about it. I am really freaking hungry right now, so I guess we'll just go ahead and end this off. This has been Nikki VMLP saying thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all later.